You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today, we are looking at buy low options. I know some of your leagues have had the trade deadline pass already. The the trade deadline still got a little bit of time to run in other leagues. We're looking at guys that you might be able to acquire on the cheap as we move forward and you push towards the end of the season and into your fantasy playoffs for those of you in non-rotisserie leagues. Michael Bolton. Let's get to it. it. Let's get to it indeed. But before we get to it, just a quick note. I am probably going to touch on this later today, but news came out about Rashawn Holmes' shoulder and he'll be out at least two to three more weeks as he's re-evaluated with a label tear. This again, coming from a bloke who was going to travel with the team and was going to be fine to play after injuring it the very next game. And then the King said he was fully healed and he was only being held out due to illness. This team is full of shit. They are terrible. They are absolutely dysfunctional. They make bad decision after bad decision. Hiring Vladi, all the decisions he makes. Firing, uh, well, no, you know what? I'm not actually that bad about uh, firing Dave Yeager because he was a, a dickhead. But hiring Luke Walton, the slowing down of pace this season. Every decision this team makes is is abominable. And you know, the the Bagley decision. And, and now this one with Holmes and the complete misrepresentation of injuries. Bagley's foot injury, Holmes's shoulder. Nothing here makes sense with this team. And they deserve, not the fans, because the fans are absolutely great, the organization does not deserve success when they don't know what they're doing. As for what we do with Holmes in this situation, we've got Holmes and Bagley out for a significant amount of time. So Nemanja Bielitz has got that value. It's going to have to be someone like Alex Len that maybe steps up. Harry Giles has played like 28 minutes and he plays 15 minutes. We've got the pencil Harrison Barnes starting at center or playing minutes at center at times as well. Len could be an ad. He's not going to be a 28-minute-a-night guy. You might get 22 from him and 20 out of Giles, and then those other guys filling in. No, I'm not looking at Jabari Parker as an ad. It's going to be Bielitsa who plays his 30, 31 minutes, and then Parker gets whatever whatever is behind that. But if you're in a situation where you don't have an IR and we're still waiting three more weeks for an evaluation of Holmes, I think there's a real chance he doesn't even come back at all during the fantasy playoffs portion of this season. So that would make him a drop, which is terrible. Uh, we've been holding this long based on, again, information that this stupid team has provided, and it has, once again, provided false. Let's go on now to look at these buy low guys that I've got that nonsense off my chest. The first guy I want to look at is the Atlanta Hawks' new starting center, Clint Capella. Now, I've got him in here mainly because when there's uncertainty about injuries, you hear it all the time. Oh, is he going to be shut down for the season? Um, And how's he going to work on his new team? So there's those two uncertain factors with Capella that make people might want to sell him for low. Now, he is the 37th ranked player this season. I think he's around that 35 to 45 range for the rest of the year. But if people are uncertain with his uh, his foot injury, and I guess there's a reason to be uncertain with that, and we're not going to see him until after the All-Star break, and it's a fair chunk of time here that he hasn't played. You know, one game in going to be three weeks. So it's, it's going to be once uh, once he comes back. You might be able to acquire him from a guy outside of the top 60. That is something that I absolutely would be looking to do. Again, because we're basing it on the uncertainty of a new team, the uncertainty of either tanking, they just won't play him, the uncertainty of an injury, and the fact that he hasn't played in three weeks. So there is value there, I think, in acquiring Clint Capella at a low, low price. The next guy we talk about is Dylan Brooks, who has been, for most of this season, really consistent. At the moment, he's consistently bad. He's the 206th ranked player over the last two weeks. The minutes are still there, but the shooting, which um, was really strong. And I saw someone tweet this, and I wish I could remember who it was. But Dylan Brooks basically parlayed six weeks of good shooting into that contract extension because he stunk at the start of the year. The shots weren't going in. Then he had a six to eight week period where he was like a 47, 48% shooter. And now it's fallen back off. Under 40% from the field in his last seven games, 23% from three, two assists, under a steal, three rebounds. And I've talked about, you know, so often with these guys, when the shot doesn't fall, what the hell else are they doing for fantasy? And Brooks is definitely falling into that category. Now, 
what I when I say that, I, I think he is still a, a buy low guy because he won't be a 23% shooter. And I'm pretty sure he won't be a 40% field goal guy overall. He's also just 74% from the line during that time. So some real issues happening here with Brooks. But if you can get him for a combination of your worst couple of players on your roster, I think doing it is a good idea because you will see a bit of a bounce back. You will see some course correction in that overall shooting numbers for Brooksy, and that would make him a good value. Same goes with CJ McCollum, who is the king of shooting slumps and shooting streaks. Over the last uh, seven games, he's the 180th ranked player because he's shooting under 42% from the field. Now, we know he just refuses to get any steals. In fact, he's averaging more blocks per game than steals per game. He is a bad rebounder. He gets low assists. He's averaging 37 minutes, which is great, but 19 points and shooting inexplicably 47% from the free throw line. Now, McCollum's free throws have been wild this season. He's 73rd over the course of the year. I think that's about the area I I had him at the start of the season, but there are people who who do believe in him as a top 30 guy. Now, he is going to jump back up because what he does is he has these runs where he's outside the top 100, and then he shoots 55% for two weeks, and he becomes a top 40 player. So... When he's at this low of a level, you go low on him, you buy into him, you see how it works, and then if he does push up and you find that person who really believes that this is four years ago or five years ago when McCullum was a top 40 player, then you sell him off, and he is the prime candidate to do something like this. The next guy is Kemba Walker, another bloke whose uh, ranking of late is not good. 162nd Kemba is over the last two weeks. He's had some injuries, but he's played 32 minutes a night over the four games he's played in that time frame. 18 points, but no blocks. 0.8 0.8 steals, 34% from the field, 77% from the line. Uh, the three-point shooting has been fine, but he's converting only 31% of his twos. That is an absolute... I don't know if it's the opposite of a red flag. is a green flag where you go, shit, that is definitely going to improve, and I know it will improve, so Kemba will jump back up. He's 32nd over the course of the year. You should be valuing him as a third-ish type of around guy. He's never going to be that top 20 player or top 24 type player he was in Charlotte because of the talent surrounding him but he's better than the 162nd ranked player, and I think we all are in agreement about that. Let's go. Next one, Toby Harris, who has been on this list so many times. He is up there with um, CJ McCollum in terms of um, ups and downs, and what his value is, it is somewhat efficiency, 44% from the field, but steals and blocks, man. He just doesn't get them. 0.3 steals and 0.3 blocks, and when you see him jump into the top 50, it's because those numbers jump back up. He's averaging 16 and 6, low three-point volume, poor percentage, poor defensive numbers. Uh, He is 61st ranked over the course of the season. I think like a a 65 to 80 type range for him rest of year is probably a a realistic expectation. But again, with the Sixers struggling with so much talk of locker room discord, uh, when you see a guy struggling like Toby, acquiring at a cheaper price in this sort of a time frame is absolutely something that you can do. The next guy we look at is Triple J. Jaron Jackson Jr., who is down a little bit at the moment, hence the reason he's on this list, 135th over the course of the last two weeks. He's 56th over the season. Why is he down so low? Well, the minutes have been a bit down, only 27 a night. There was a foul trouble game in there, but also the shooting. True shooting sits at an abominable 46%, 36% from the field, 20, uh, 29% from three. 42% from two. He's blocking a lot of shots, but under five rebounds, he's averaging 12 points. It really is a down time for Jackson at the moment. And again, that means that we can try and get him at a cheaper price if you want to sell the foul trouble, if you want to sell the, the poor shooting, and more importantly, which people hate, hey, man, he's seven foot, doesn't even grab rebounds. Oh, what a soft cock. Yeah, got to get rid of him. People love, if anyone's tall and they don't get rebounds, people love shitting on them. So you can use that to your advantage to try and get Jackson onto your team. Malcolm Brogdon, I think, is a key one as well. The return of Victor Oladipo plus the last game he played was really poor. And over the last two weeks, he's ranked 133rd. Throw in the injuries as well, and it's a prime candidate. Now, what he's also doing is shooting only 69% from the line. Giggity. And this is a bloke that was like a hundred percent shooter for stretches of times. Like he is a better three point, a better free throw shooter than that. He's hitting only twenty seven percent of his threes when he was like at forty percent uh, at times throughout his career. There's big, big jumps that can happen there. Now, also zero point four steals. He's the sixty seventh ranked player this season. I think that's about right where he's going to be the rest of the year. One hundred thirty third. Is way too low, but there's uncertainty with Oladipo, recent form and injuries, meaning you can get maybe a 20, 30 spot ranking discount in terms of acquiring him in a deal. Next up, we look at Terry Rozier of the Charlotte Hornets. I was thinking about this last night, as you do. Um, Do the Hornets have one player on their team that you would consider a solid NBA starter? I don't think they do. 
I don't think Devontae Graham would be... Ideally, he's not an NBA starter. Rozier isn't. Miles Bridges isn't. PJ Washington isn't. Cody Zeller isn't. Malik Monk isn't. Maybe you could make that argument that Graham is an NBA starter caliber player. I, I don't think that he is. Um, but yeah, I don't think, and I don't think there's really prospects for anyone to be to develop into that player, which is pretty weird. Anyway, Rogier, 121st over the last two weeks, he's 65th over the course of the season, and unsurprisingly, it's because his assist numbers are absolutely in the toilet, two per game. He's got one steal over his last seven games, and he's shooting 40% from the field, including 32% from three. His contract still remains horrible, but he has been about the area again that we sort of expected to him to be in the preseason. He has just dropped way off with that. Ridiculous Reduction in assists and steals and the shooting is hurting him. So you might be able to get him at a cheaper price. The last guy we talk about. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Gobert is the 107th ranked player over the course of the last two weeks. He's 39th over the course of the year. So what's different? Well, 1.4 1.4 blocks in his last seven games has caused him to drop way down. He's still shooting 72% from the field. He's averaging 15 and 14. He's averaging under one assist and under half a steal, which is obviously not good. But what has also happened is his free throws have dropped off. And while he's never good in that area, when you go from 61 down to 57, that is actually a significant drop in overall value there. The blocks are down. He's at 2.1 blocks over the last three months. So that's fallen way off. His assists are down as well. And again, 1.5 for the season is a low amount. But 1.5 down to 0.9 is actually a a decent enough difference. Same as his steals, which are almost cut in half. And again, 0.7 is a low number, but 0.4 is a much, much lower number. And that is almost half that value dropped off there. Everything else is the same. It's just that that weird lack of assists, the weird lack of steals, the reduction in blocks, and the small reduction in free throws, all those things combined, because they're low volume stats and because free throws, it's not as apparent. Losing half your assists, half your steals, um, you know, two third or a third of your blocks, plus that drop in free throws, means that you can tumble 40, 50 spots in rankings really easy. And that's exactly what's happened to Rodi Gobert in this one. So I would expect those blocks to come back. I would expect, again, it's just one assist a game. If he gets an extra one assist per game, that jumps back up. If the steals come back, then he jumps back into that top 40 without really any discussion at all. People are down on Gobert. If he doesn't get two and a half blocks a game, oh, shit, he's lost his, he's lost his touch. So when he's in a slump like this, um, it is time to try and pounce on him. And I think we look at him as a pretty solid top 50 guy as we move forward. That'll do it for me today and the mini show. I'll be back later on to recap Tuesday's action, to preview Wednesday's games as well. Subscribe to this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube. Give me a comment down below. Give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Give it a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts as well, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya. See ya.